Chanel, welcome to a new episode of Vital Vinyl Vlog. Today's video is brought to you by Liz and it's gonna be macabre murder metal. So happy to have this back in my life. It's been a long well over a decade since I've owned this bad boy. So stoked. I have the silver and black swirl vinyl, band edition, limited to 300. My third favorite macabre record, Sinister Slaughter, Dahmer, Murder Metal. And it's just great. It's so fun, so catchy, and it's macabre, a mix of nursery rhymes, Midwest death metal, and just a little bit of punk. And inside of that human stew happens to be murder metal. One of the only bands I can actually say has kept their original lineup since 1985 when they started. And I love Macabre. I know they are a total acquired taste, but if you've ever seen them live, you know how good they are. If you've ever heard Sinister Slaughter, I think that, if you don't like that record, I kind of understand, because it's, the vocals aren't for everybody, especially when he does his highs, but I, to me, that's like, what makes Macabre stand out, like, just you know, nursery rhyme-esque death metal vocals at times. Sometimes it's just out of hand highs and then just... your corpse away. Like, you're dying to be with me. Like, this straight up starts off like a punk song, as you can hear. And then even... I love this album. Like, Murder Metal is so good. Nuclear Blaster issue. You're dying to be with me. Like, so catchy. Like I said, I personally think Sinister Slaughter is their best material, along with Dahmer. I did not know this was available on cassette, but I'm extremely happy I got the vinyl version because it sounds so fucking good. And um, I know the band is sold out. This was actually the last band copy. I know that for a fact. Oh, the last band copy of this variant on Bandcamp. But they do have this 
I'm pretty sure on the website, and there's like a clear splatter version, but like, I don't know. I'd rather get the black vinyl, but I personally, I, you know, I saw this was the last band colored copy, and I really liked how the band color looked and snagged it. So, yeah, what a, what a killer fucking record, no pun intended. And, like I said, you know, if you're a fan of Midwest death metal, I would consider Macabre to be essential listening. You know, it's not for everybody, but you can't deny that Midwest death metal vibe that's within every single one of their recordings, except probably, like, the campfire, you know, stories, like the, you know, campfire minstrels or whatever it's called. I, I forget off the top of my head. But, um, I always regret not buying, like, M Macabre always has really good merch. When I see them, like, I've seen them live a couple times. They've always had awesome merch. Last time I bought a 7-inch, that was, I didn't have that much money, but it was a 7-inch split with Capitalist Casualties. Like, I had no idea Macabre even worked with Capitalist Casualties, so that was fucking cool. I, I'll never forget that. But you get 13 tracks here, and, you know, it's not like they're running out of serial killers, but, like, you have a track about, like, Jack the Ripper. But also, there's tons of people who I've never heard of, but, like, having a song about, like, the Iceman and stuff, like, starting off with At the Bath ba Vampire. There's some real good ones here. The Hillside Stranglers. Like, they'll, they'll always play that live, I'm pretty sure, from now on. Like, that's, like, one of their live bangers. But, um, you know, I just feel... On a personal level, I'm a massive Macabre fan, and to me, they represent, like, legit underground extreme music, because, I mean, here's a band that has not broken away from their concept either of singing about serial killers. You know how every Deicide record, like, how many records can Glenn Benton write about, you know, knocking old JC down a few pegs, like, that's fine and all, but, like, after a while, it's like, all right, like, when you, when you start naming your tracks, like, Mad at God, you're not even trying, I'm sorry, you're not, that's, that's fucking lazy, but, I mean, yes, Glenn Benton has kind of you know, he can name a song whatever the fuck he wants. I'm just saying, like, go and look at, like, the, the track titles for, like, Legion and shit. Compare them to, like, the lyrics on Stench of Redemption. And you'll, I mean, not even the lyrics, the song titles. And you'll be like, okay. But, like, Macabre, they just, you know, have a pretty much unlimited... Not, not really, I mean, eventually, I guess you could run out of, you know, serial killer, serial killers that are worth singing about, but, like, you know, there's a track on here about, like, Heidnik and stuff, like, Heidnik is the only Philadelphia, like, serial killer I know of, and they were an awesome metallic hardcore band also, they had a song called Battle Swords that yeah, it was a good time. But, like, this is just a catchy record, and you have Nefarious on bass and vocals, fucking Corporate Death on guitar and vocals, and Dennis the Menace on drums, as always. I'm pretty sure somebody that, like, won a Grammy uh, had something to do with, like, mastering this and stuff. But I don't really know off the top of my head, so I'm not gonna drop names or anything. But the layout concept by Kevin Sharp. I wonder if that's the same Kevin Sharp from Brutal Truth. Not 100% sure, but I'm guessing that's probably who it is. 
but macabre are and always have been. I always like how they put the on like their full lengths. But I really need to get Sinister Slaughter now, and I have all three macabre albums that I love. I would love to have gotten Dahmer on vinyl, but you know, I'm happy with the cassette version. I think it sounds really good. I don't want to knock all this other good stuff out of the way. There's some real good shit over there. But Macabre Dahmer, awesome. Like, I have Grim Scary Tales, but, like, it's a cassette dub. But that's not one of my favorites, but it's still, it's Macabre. I mean, this is one of the greatest concept records ever. Ding dong, Dahmer dead, massive people to their bed. But, yes, thank you, Liz. Macabre Murder Metal on Nuclear Blast Records. Uh, I don't even know if uh, Decompose did Murder Metal. I think Nuclear Blast did it. I honestly forget. I used to have this CD. It's just been so fucking long. And I, I had an original copy of Sinister Slaughter on tape. And I remember it even says something about, like, the drums not being sped up or anything, like Dennis's blast beats and, like, stuff like that. They made a big thing about, you know, the drums being 100% real, and I think that's always something awesome. But, like, when it comes to Macabre, like I said, to me, it goes Sinister Slaughter, which I do not have anymore, Dahmer. This is also the Nuclear Blast reissue, but a cassette version. At the time, I could not afford the vinyl, and now we have a vinyl version of Murder Metal, and it sounds absolutely incredible. I forgot to show you the cosmetics. I knew I took it off here. Oh, no, I already did. My fault. I'll show you again, though. This is limited to 300 the band version silver and black swirl vinyl it says but also i got some other goodies yesterday and i have to thank caligari records here because we got two bad boys in the mail one we have the grotesqueries haunted mausoleum cassette very stoked. People have been telling me I'm gonna love that, and what I checked out, I loved, and yes, we have the rude Outer Reaches EP. I'm, I, I forget if it's an EP or a full length, but Dawn Breed Records and Conspiracy of Caligari Heavy duty vinyl here. I don't know if this is sold out or not, but for real, anytime Caligari does a vinyl release, it's something special. And Rude play really badass sci fi driven death metal. Like, I fucking love Rude. Like, I'm beyond grateful to have this in my hands right now. Like, for real. This is a really, really nice vinyl. Uh, like, package and stuff. I just got plain black. I, I did not expect a copy of this. It just randomly showed up yesterday. I was like, holy shit. Thank you. Caligari fucking records. Yeah, plain black vinyl. I love seeing that Caligari logo on 12 inches of wax. Also, this comes on a real badass color, though. But I'm just happy to have a copy of this. The cover art's fantastic. Very Voivod-ish. And just awesome. I think it might have been that dude that did... Remember that band Vector? I think the dude got in trouble for, like, doing some stuff. I don't remember what happened, but 
that's what this reminded me of, and I was kind of like, oh, like, that's cool. And then like with this listening to this though, it's its own like thing, and I fucking really dig what they're doing here. I don't even know how to like explain Rude's sound. It's just fucking gnarly. And it's something that I feel is definitely worth your time. And it's another, you know, one of those things I'm just grateful that I'm able to talk about something like this with you sickos. Because I'm just as stoked on this as some of you that might have been waiting for this LP. Because, like, I, I've, you know, been one of those people that, like, I should have gotten this on cassette, like, when it came out, but I slept on it like a, like a bum, and I, you know, kind of, like, legitimately regretted it, but here we are now, and we have a copy to go over. I'm sorry, I'm just looking for a little postcard. The Bay Area's underground crew, Rude, is back with six new tracks of pure and primitive Spaced Out Death Metal, out now on vinyl and CD. I think that it was Head Split that did the cassette, but I'm probably wrong on that. I'm just, like, guessing right now. But, yeah. And Grotesqueries. Caligari Records is proud to introduce new underground death metal force, Grotesqueries, and their punishing three-track debut EP, Haunted Ma Mausoleum. Or Mausoleum. But, yeah. Sick shit, but macabre murder metal. So stoked to have this slab of murderous death metal mixed up with nursery rhymes and a little bit of punk. It's weird. It's awesome. It's catchy. It's fucking macabre. If you're a fan of death metal, I think chances are extremely high you're a fan of macabre or you're not. It, it's, you know, like that. There kind of is no middle ground here. Like, when you play the game of death metal, there is no middle ground. You either love or you hate macabre. Unless, you know, you just like Sinister Slaughter, but you feel Dahmer is, like, tasteless or something like that. I've had somebody argue with me, like, how could you like this? It's the tasteless death metal. It's like, dude, it's fucking... Like, so interesting. Like, they actually, like, go very in-depth with these stories about serial killers. And, like, yeah, I know it's not in the best of taste, but it's death fucking metal based on serial killers. Extremely well done, and Macabre have been doing this since 1985. So, thank you again, Liz for keeping the channel alive with releases like this. Like, I'm flabbergasted that I actually have a copy of Murder Metal on vinyl right here in my hands. I think this might be its first time being on vinyl, but I'm not sure. I forget off the top of my head. But as always, thanks for watching. You fucking rule, especially if you made it 19 minutes into this video. Also, thank you to Caligari Records. Mr. Brown, killing it as always, total fucking support, and Jason at Rotted Life Records, I rarely wear this shirt, and I don't know why, this is a Rotted Life Records shirt, it's pretty fucking sick, and yeah, if they still have these, I highly suggest grabbing one, because it's a badass shirt, somebody stole my sleeves, but these things happen, but Thanks for watching, as always. Hails.